So it is now six o'clock. I'm gonna. I'm calling the meeting to order. We have uh, started recording, so we're being recorded at this time. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Hearing none, then I'll move on. Is there any public comment? Again, hearing none, let's move on to the uh, meeting minutes, please. Do we have Jeremy's Jeremy on the line? Yet. No, he's not here yet. Jeremy's not here. Okay, we'll come, we'll come back to uh, Jeremy when he arrives. Um, let's move forward then with the treasurer's report. I believe Ray is going to take this on in lieu of Mary Beth. Yeah, Laurie Beth would like to have been here, but she was in the hospital, and so we'll be joining us next week. Yeah. So um, uh, sorry to hear about that. Uh, first thing is that um, we've begun the audit. Uh, we've been providing information to the auditor, and um, the last thing they were looking for was the value of our inventory that we're holding. And so uh, we're continuing to feed that and the target is still April for the um, for uh, the completion of the report. So let me let me just go through some highlights. And basically, this is this is 2022. This is an accrual report, profit and loss for 2022. Uh, total grant income you can see is um, 16.3 million dollars. About um, expenses. Administration expenses, and this includes um, all kinds of uh, different things. If I can pull up my other screen here, let's see if I can find it. Um, but it, in, it includes uh, the accounting fees, treasurer fees, um, executive director salary, et cetera, et cetera. So those insurance costs, consulting costs, legal. Uh, so all of those expenses. Uh, we you can see that we had poll inventory expenses uh, services of uh, half a million dollars. Uh, you'll see that later on as well in a, in a different uh, in a different uh, section. Um, and this is the section coming up: pre-construction expenses, design services. This is NRTC for about one and a half million dollars. You can see that uh, make ready services over seven hundred twenty-five thousand dollars for tree trimming, pole replacement, um, et cetera. Uh, a lot of money. Uh, materials, paid uh, $3.2 million in uh, materials and his additional pole services. And I think it's there because it was in a different a different pot that we paid for it. The total expenses about six and a half million dollars, leaving the revenue uh, in excess of uh, expenses of $9.9 .9 .9 million. Any questions or comments? Not, not hearing any, then uh, thank you. Thank you, Ray. That's, uh, that's very good news. Our, uh, our grant income, um, we've, we're, we're, we're getting, uh, where you see that we're, we're built, we're building up revenues, but those revenues will be spent quite quickly, especially as the season changes and and when we move into a full bore construction season. Jeremy, I'm going to get back to you in a minute on the uh, minutes, please. But right now I have a question from David Healy. Go ahead, David. Have we received the state ARPA match money? No, uh, no we have not. Okay. Do we have to invoice them for it? Um, that's between Jerry and Rob. That's 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 a pretty good question. Yeah, we probably do. That would be Rob Fish. <laughs> Understood. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, Jer Jeremy's with us now. Let's get to those um, meeting minutes and get ourselves caught up here. Thank you. You're a mute, Jeremy. Whoops. I said uh, I apologize. Teams is not loading on my computer, which is peachy. So I'm going to restart that after I make the motion to approve the November 9th and December 13th, 2022 meeting minutes as drafted. 
uh, with minor grammatical corrections uh, suggested by Alan um, and Linda. And then uh, there was one correction um, from Janiel. Um, it was incorrectly stated that John Healy seconded a motion um, that should have been David Healy. Second. Uh, Seconded me, by Siobhan. Uh, RD, I see your hand is up, sir. I, I'm sorry. Can we separate the motions because I'm going to have to vote abstain on uh, the minutes of the, on the December minutes because I wasn't here. Sure enough. Uh, okay. Um, motion to approve the November 9th, 2022 meeting. Although, just to note for everyone, you are you know able to view recordings and whatnot online um, but anyways motion to approve the november 9th 2022 meeting minutes as drafted with uh corrections second seconded second by siobhan any discussion on this matter <clears throat> any opposed abstentions all right the meeting minutes for november are approved uh, um, Jeremy, do you want to move on? Yeah, motion to approve the December 13th, 2022 meeting minutes as drafted with corrections as I described earlier. Second. Second. Sec seconded by Siobhan. Any discussion on the matter? Any opposed? Any abstentions? Yes, I abstain. RD. RD ex abstains. Hearing no oppose the meeting, the motion passes. Thank you very much. Uh, Janiel, we're gonna get into our construction update here. Would you like to start us off and please introduce Tony? Absolutely. So um, uh, Tony um, is here from NRTC um, to join us. He's the construction manager that we've retained for the construction of our network. We've, we've started, even though it's, December and January and making some pretty amazing progress. But I would like I would like Tony to take take this over because he has some visuals for us today that a picture is worth a thousand words and and he's real time on the ground in Vermont with the construction crew um, kitting out the warehouse materials and so he can he can do a much more exciting job uh, at explaining where we're at. Well. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tony, I set the standard Oop. high. <laughs> Good start, Tony. Yeah, Good you, start. You, you set that damn bar very high. <laughs> uh, hey, I'm I saw share... your pictures earlier, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to share my screen. Uh, if I can get to it. Uh, basically, this is our electronic map that we're working on. Uh, we are in the Callis area. Uh, Caliso one to be exact, and um, whoops, let me stop sharing that one. Let me share the correct one. Uh, so right now the Caliso T or OLT is at the Calis substation. We currently have down uh, Old West Church Road down to Fowler Road. We are also working in the next, uh, the other direction towards the west uh, as of today. But down uh, uh, North Callis Road, Jack Pine Road, and Moscow uh, Road, we are fully stranded today. We Whoa. plan. We plan to have fiber, uh, and the reason we're only stranding is we like to get ahead at least um, a full reel of fiber worth of strand ahead of the fiber crew. So this week we are working on anchors uh, for all of this and looking at stranding the, uh, or fibering the strand that we have up today. So we are looking, right now we have roughly four miles worth of strand up and by mid to end next week, we should have this with fiber. Um, so we are we are fully active. We've got one crew right now uh, from Eustis that is uh, actively stranding. 
an additional crew, uh, a different crew will come in that will actually fiber this. So as we're as we have this lead, we hope to maintain that lead ahead of the fiber crew. And we are actively going through all of the uh, application areas that we have the license to to attach. Um, we are uh, looking at building the OLT site yet this week, although weather may hamper us a little bit. Um, it, it's funny, uh, who'd have thought we'd be building an OLT site in the winter? And uh, even with the good weather that we're having, it it is either freezing up or raining on us. So it, it's kind of crazy that uh, we are where we are today, but uh, it, everything is looking good. I, I want everybody uh, that is uh, potentially living in this area, if, if you see uh, real carriers, bucket trucks, uh, additional trucks, uh, they are desperately trying to give you enough room to get around them. We should have uh, uh, signage, cones, uh, warnings that we are in active construction unless we're in the uh, uh, off-road areas. But uh, we we are actively building. Um, we're once the fibers up, we will be probably working on Old Camp Road, uh, trying to get back to the OLT site as best we can. But also. <clears throat> We are looking to uh, not only continue CLO1, but we're looking at going into CLO2. And as these other areas uh, that you can see, where we have permission to uh, attach, these are green areas. I've got the DA areas turned off right at the moment, but the orange areas are areas that we're still pending a license to attach. Um, and it's it's not a problem. We're just waiting the the game out. The green areas are where we can go, so that's where we're building. And we've got a, several miles that we can build, so we're actively coming in. We should be bringing in yet another strand crew in the next three to four weeks, and additional fiber crews as weather permits. Um, but uh, Bear with us. We're 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 getting it done, but it's uh, a lot of these areas were cross country, not along the roadside. We're having to to physically climb each pole, and it just takes a little time. Yeah, and it's about 120 miles of green, ready to yep. go licenses. Yep, we're, everything is falling into place. Tony, could you uh, discuss the, the the steps that are necessary to, to uh, actually uh, get to a lit OLT? Yes. I, I um, mean, there were there were permits yeah. and there's all kinds of things that had to be done. Yeah. Hey, RG had a question as well. Um, oh, sorry. I just wanted to know what the difference between, but I think Ray asked the question in a different way, the difference between stranding and fibering and why you need two different crews. But I think that's yep. part of Ray's question. Yep, and, and I'll go into both of those. So uh, stranding is uh, what we call a messenger. It's a 10M strand, uh, and it's a metal metal strand that we physically attach to each pole. Once we have enough uh, mileage ahead of the fibering crew, so the fiber crew will come back with the reel of fiber. So it is very far very possible that you will see a reel of fiber alongside of the road on a reel carrier and they will physically pull that out along the strand and then lash that together they they will okay. lash that up to the strand that also will give us the ability to uh put up the storage uh loops that we need and mm -hmm. the splice locations uh the olt right now we've got to physically uh build it, which <laughs> required uh, a few permits. Uh, we've got to have an underground permit. Uh, I believe we've discussed that we don't need the DNR permit where we're at today, but 
many permits to go through to get to where we're at today. We also are, uh, we're gonna build this uh, pad with the template that we have. And then once the, the actual cabinet comes in or cabinets, we will then set those. The fiber should be there by that, by that time and we will be able to splice it and then Waitsfield will come in and physically connect everything as far as the cards um, and, and be able to turn up the friendlies at that point. Uh, in a discussion with Waitsfield this morning, we've got, uh, I asked them if they would turn it up without the fiber there and they would rather not. Uh, they would like to know that things can be turned up uh, and light at the same time. Um, I personally like to let them cook a little bit, but <laughs> but these are all battery uh, backup uh, OLTs. Uh, and in, in certain uh, situations, we will also have a uh, propane generator to back up the batteries yet. So it's gonna be a pretty solid, pretty solid area. And Ray, you have a question? Yeah, I just, um, could you describe what your job is? Yes, my job is I run construction uh, currently today for all of Vermont. Um, <laughs> I, I have had uh, construction for all of NRTC. And basically what me and my team do is we validate invoicing from the contractor and we also validate that they're doing everything safely. We make sure that they've got all of their uh, personal protection equipment on, that the flagging's up, that the conage is out so nobody gets hurt. But we're also making sure and inspecting that it is to NR NARSC and RUS uh, guidelines. Uh, we have a, a hierarchy that we have to follow and we make sure that that's done to that standard. One that, so it doesn't come down. Two, if it does come down, there are uh, avenues that uh, protect us as a, uh, or protect CV fiber as an entity that it was done correctly regarding what happens. But yeah, I'm in charge of construction and I work very closely daily, hourly with the, the contractor and my OSP manager and inspection team. Yeah, and um, construction has really hustled with, with <coughs> this, uh, construction with Tony, with warehousing, with yep. Eustace. There's been a lot of hustle here. One of the things um, that was negotiated is getting the pad templates in advance of the cabinets, which isn't typically done. If we hadn't done that, we wouldn't have been able to lay down um, this late, you know, we're, we're ahead of schedule because we're uh, hustling and negotiating to get, for instance, the, the template so that we can lay down the pad first before the cabinets come in. Um, things like that, borrowing anchors where needed um, from sister CEDs and, and other sorts of creative workarounds to make sure that this gets done. Yep, and, and, and Janelle, we always, uh, my take is we're always behind. So we're always, we always try to keep going uh, and, and push. Um, there's only so much we can push. Uh, and, and Eustace is, has been very good with us. Uh, they know that I'm pushing, uh, but there is some reality that, you know, we have to live with. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, they know I'm wanting mileage. So if I just kind of put this in perspective about where we're at now and what's going to what's going to be in place in April and May, and that is we have one contractor with one crew. Is that right, Tony? One crew. In and April and May, one crew. Yeah. One crew. One crew. And in April, we're going to April and May, we're going to have two contractors, each of them with three or four crews. Yep. And and so they'll be turning and burning uh, uh, next year. We're we're not able to get a lot done at this you know at this stage in this weather et cetera. Uh, we can only really put one crew to work. That's about it. Tony, you want to spend ten or fifteen minutes on bolts? <laughs> oh no no, no 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 please please don't, don't. I would rather not. But <laughs> yeah, please don't. <laughs> 
A bowl is... <laughs> it's a thing. We, it is a thing. <laughs> we did spend 10 minutes on it today at the NRTC call. At least 10 minutes. At least. At least. Maybe 20. I'm not sure. <laughs> are, are there any other questions for, for Tony? Uh, yeah, David, go ahead. Yeah, I just want to say, I mean, in, in top of the weather, in terms of make ready, which is our critical path to, to construction, having two snowstorms, ice storms, and then a hurricane down south, we have yep. lost a lot of make ready crew to yes. deal with electrical outages. And it's really ha hampered us, especially, uh, well, WEC has done a phenomenal job for us, but GMP is way behind. Uh, and, and David, I would like to add that I'm actually very surprised how far we are today with all of that uh, uh, behind, I mean, theoretically behind us, but uh, regarding that delay, I'm, I'm very happy with where we're at today um, with how much we've actually gotten uh, stranded. Uh, we're still working on the OLT. But there was a time when I was like, well, shoot, we're not even going to get started until February. Um, so uh, it, it is it is a real thing. Alan, I see your hands up, sir. You're on mute, Alan. That's a dollar. Thank you. <laughs> I think I read in the most recent Washington Electric Co-op newsletter that the co-op lost 37 poles in the most recent storm. Does yep. it's is, does that mean that it's horrible to look at it this way? But does that make it a little bit easier for us because now some poles that maybe we would have had to replace have already been replaced? Absolutely. Ooh. Sadly, they're not <laughs> all exactly where we want them to be, but. Uh, there are some that we were going to have to address, and they are now addressed. <laughs> and the, I, I, I will say I'm a Washington Electric Co-op customer, so I'm probably not going to like this answer. But is this so in the uh, co-op's nickel? Those poles, yeah. yeah. Yes, those Thank poles you. Okay. are all on theirs. Yeah, but Alan, it's it's also possible, Alan, that there were some things in the other direction that we didn't see because they never happened. Because we got yeah. out there and did our make ready, and a big part of make ready is tree trimming and getting things out of the way so that they can run the strand and run the fiber. So it's possible that you know because of the make ready work that we did, some of those poles are standing that didn't that wouldn't have you know they didn't yeah. have any uh, any trees falling on them because we took them down in advance. Oh, it, so I'd, li I'd like to think it all works out. It, yeah, okay. it could have easily been 100 poles down uh, with the recent storms that I, I would like to think that we saved 50 plus uh, in, in those areas where they went ahead of us. And actually kudos to WEC for getting ahead of it the way they've done. They've done very well for us. That's great. Thank you. Any other questions for Tony? We'll, we'll, we'll let him go have his dinner. Oh. Tony, thank you so much. That thank was very you. exciting. Thank you so much. Uh, Thanks, I, I'm Tony. here for you guys. <laughs> we appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right. We'll see you Have next month. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> that was uh, any, Janelle, is there any additional construction update that we need to touch on before moving on? I think that's the important stuff. I mean, that's that's where we're at. So, yep. Fantastic. Um, so let's let's move on to the 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 website update. Janiel, I'll let you start and then parse it out as uh, or distribute it as as you see fit. Sure. So uh, a huge milestone last week um, that our website went live with the new feature that allows people to sign up for uh, updates. So this is a pre-registration <laughs> level uh, update sign up. Uh, this is not for subscribing to services, but, but it allows folks to put in their address so that they can be informed when wh for what the what the status is for our construction and availability of service when it when it comes live. So um, we 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 are we are now at a in a position where we can start uh, going down to an address level detail for potential subscribers. Uh, 
Fantastic. Uh, Linda, please. I think it's really important that people do not tell them that we have subscriptions ready, monthly subscriptions ready. We do not. <laughs> we are not taking uh, registrations for subscriptions. So um, please do not send the word around that, that that is what is on the website. It is not. Thank you. John Walters, do you have that? <laughs> <laughs> very good, very good. We are moving forward here on, on all fronts. Uh, let me continue moving, moving on here at the, uh, at the uh, most recent executive committee meeting. The uh, executive committee approved for recommendation to the governing board that Janiel be the representative to Vicuda for CV Fiber. David Healy has been doing that job um, all of this time. And at the, like I said a few days ago at the at the last executive committee meeting, um, they they approved the motion to have Janiel um, take over that position. So I'm gonna I'm going to make a motion now. Um, whereas the ex executive committee on the fifth of January. Approved, rec approved the recommendation to the governing board that Janiel Smith be the Vicuda representative for CV Fiber. Uh, I move, therefore, that the governing board approve Janiel Smith as our Second. representative to CV Fiber. Seconded by Siobhan. That counts. <laughs> no, no, that was Linda. That was Linda. Oh, oh that was Linda. Oh, my goodness. She was, she was winning. Okay, Jeremy. Yeah, yeah, you got <laughs> yeah. sorry. Um, oh, oops. Uh, so I believe that we had also recommended that David Healy be the alternate. So I'd like to propose that as a friendly amendment. Accepted. Thank you. David also put that in the chat. Thank you. Uh, Ray, I see that your hand is up. That was it. <laughs> all right. That's okay. For you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm very willing to accept help. So, and, and with, when I have three people pushing me in the same direction, it's all the better. All right. So the motion's on the floor. It's been seconded. Are there any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, David, for all you've done. Thank you for continuing as the alternate. And Janiel, thank you for taking this on. This, this, is, this is great. I just want uh, to can I can I say something about Vicuda? Uh, I'm please. not sure how many delegates in the board know what Vicuda is, but it's an opportunity for it's an organization of the 10 CUDs. Uh, there's a coordinator position that's been hired and he sort of runs the meetings, but it basically is our uh, voice to the Vermont Community Broadband Board. We're heard at every broadband board meeting via this this mechanism. And um, it was the device that we used to buy our first rolls of fiber. Um, so it's a very useful organization to be a member. We assume it'll it'll grow and it's required, you know, what we need from it. But I just want to make sure everybody knew what Vicuda was all about. Anyway. No, that's good, David. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's let's move on to the materials purchase here. I I uh I'd like to give just just a, a little bit of a of a preamble. We've the governing board has already approved up to ten million dollars for materials purchase, and we have that money. Uh, what we are what we are interested in here is making a second purchase. We've purchased four hundred miles of material, thinking that in 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 2022 slash part of 2023, we were going to get 400 miles done. What we're seeing now is the potential to get 600 miles done if we have the materials. So we're looking for another 200 miles of materials. And what's very important is the order of how we're doing this. 
we really need to buy the materials first and then run the construction as far as we can. We, we can't stop construction for lack of materials. The reason being is that these materials have such a long lead time. So if we're thinking about using materials in September and October of 2023, we need to purchase them now or, or we won't have them in time. So this is, this is, this is what we're thinking. We're, we're, we're hoping that the grant construction money will allow us a continuous flow of work, but it's not just the grant construction money that we need. We need the materials in the warehouse. And, th and that's, what, that's what we're asking for here. What we, what we would like to do is increase from the $10 million of materials purchase, increase that to $14 million to get us, to get us in, the, in the vicinity of the 600 miles that we would hope to be able to do if everything else works out, we hope to be able to do in 2023, but we simply can't even plan for that if we don't purchase the materials now so that they're in the warehouse when the construction crews need them. Second. Second. That wasn't quite a motion. That was a, that was that was Jerry rambling. <laughs> um, keep it light. <laughs> keep it light. That's okay. Um, is, is there anybody that wants to make a motion, or I'm just going to repeat the motion from the executive committee, which recommended this to the governing board for approval? Okay. I would recommend repeating the the motion and also pasting it into chat uh, if there are whereases and all the rest of that, um, because well, there, that makes it. Yeah, understood. Understood. So here we go. Whereas the governing board approved the expenditure of up to $10 million for materials, warehouse, and supply chain services on 14 June 2022. And whereas the governing board authorized the executive committee to approve the acquisition of such materials from such vendors as the executive committee shall determine to be in the best interest of CV Fiber. And whereas CV Fiber has pre procured approximately $7.6 million for the dollars worth of materials for the first 400 miles, and whereas CV Fiber has plans to build 600 miles in 2023. And whereas materials are facing a long lead time and are increasing in price, and whereas it is in CV Fiber's best interest to get ahead of these lead times and price increases, the executive committee on the 5th of January, 2023, recommended that the governing board approve an expenditure of an additional 4 million for a total of 14 million from such vendors subject to available funding as determined by the executive committee to be in the best interest of CV Fiber. Second. Seconded by Linda. Come on, Siobhan. Yeah. Where is Siobhan? Don't see Siobhan. I think that was my, my camera keeps going out, but I'm here. Okay. I just want you all to participate and be part of all of this. There you go. Thank you. Uh, any additional discussion on this on this matter? Okay. Hearing none, are there any opposed to the motion? Are there any abstentions? Well, the motion passes. Thank you. This is a this is a big step. 2023 is going to be an amazing year. Absolutely an amazing year. Thank you and all. 600 miles is half of our network. To put it into perspective, that's huge. That's amazing. Woohoo! Thank you. Thank you. Get the internet. All right, let's let's uh <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, Alan, I think I'm going to pass this over to you for the uh, privacy commitment statement, following up on what we what we did at the executive committee at on Thursday. You're on mute. You're still on mute, Alan. Oh, we're waiting. 
sometimes going between two screens is something I still haven't gotten used to. <laughs> um, sometimes so, I try to tap my computer screen because I've been using my iPad. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's. I'll try that next time. <laughs> <laughs> so, so despite despite a winter storm, despite two holidays, your policy committee and a bunch of other people have actually been able to work to get a policy before you uh, concerning privacy. It's the one that I, I sent out the other day to everybody. The second version is the one that has the correction from Chuck. Thank you for the spelling of internet, which should be capitalized. And just to, just to, just to give you a walk down memory lane, this was first approved by the policy committee on December the 6th, and then at meetings of the executive committee and the governing board on the 13th of December, more changes were suggested. And then after that, further suggestions by Ray and also most especially by Chuck, who, who really added a lot of good content, those were put in the mix. And then Janiel and I did some polishing of it. And then there was some final polishing in the end in response to some feedback from Ray. So this is past the executive committee with uh, on January the 5th with a recommendation from that committee to the governing board that the policy be adopted. Basically, what we're doing is we're creating a privacy policy overview that's going to be like a a um, a guide, as, as it were, uh, sort of a, um, a, a single one page statement about our commitment to, to privacy. And then the nuts and bolts, as you read at the very bottom of the policy, we're going to add some sort of language like, you know, click here on our website for further information about the processes and procedures we use to ensure your, your privacy is protected. That's where the nitty gritty and all the lawyer type stuff is going to be. But we wanted to have a single page that an average person who's thinking about subscribing to our services can read and feel good about the effort we're going to make to protect their privacy. So we've done our best. I think it's been polished really well. Uh, Janiel or Chuck, do you do you have any anything else to say? You've been working really hard on this. Um, no, just gr great teamwork. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just add um, a you know, quick reminder of uh, some of the you know the concerns on the earlier iterations. Um, as an organization, unfortunately, the, there is just a, a reality that we do have to share customer information in certain um, scenarios. Uh, we also will need to be sharing things like aggregate usage st statistics um, and uh, other such pieces of information that are going to be business critical. Uh, toward uh, being able to continue to support, build out, and improve our fiber optic capabilities. Um, and most notably, we'll be sharing pretty much everything with Wheatsfield Champlain Valley Telecom, who is a separate legal entity. We're under contract with them, and, and so there will be obligations that they uh, maintain our standards of, of privacy. Um, and, you know, we'll we'll try to maintain that same level of, uh, of standard with any vendor we get into um, contract with uh, uh, where they're going to receive um, direct customer information. Uh, there will be some other vendors that will have access to other aggregate statistics and, and not necessarily direct customer information um, that won't have quite the same degree of, of uh, level of privacy as, uh, as we will maintain. Uh, most notably, an example there would be our website has tools on it that allow us to measure usage of the website over time, uh, find out what pages are are working well, what pages are not working well, and and you know kind of where people are are finding what they want versus where they they're not finding what they want, and and uh, unfortunately the the le the mechanisms by which you uh, measure those kinds of things do open up some aggregate usage statistics to uh, third parties who uh, don't have quite as nice and clean privacy statements as as this has become. So that that was a lot of uh, you know my initial concern on the first go around. And uh, I think the version that that um, went through executive committee last week uh, addresses all of the concerns I personally had. Uh, it allows us to achieve the the you know doing business that we are going to need to do while still making it very clear 
to our customers that we have no intent to ever sell their personal information uh, and that you know any time we are giving up that information it is in the explicit and express interest of uh, of supporting our network and improving it over time. RD, sir, go ahead. Just very briefly, when we do contract with a third party, do we have um, uh, any policies uh, regarding their privacy policies? Do we review their privacy policies, vet their policies, ensure that they're consistent with ours? And if we don't, should we? We do. Yes, we do that. We're, we're okay. working right Thank now you. with CrowdFiber, who has agreed to redo their po their privacy policy at our pushing, um, and that will come out early next year. We're also working with Equal Access to Broadband, who's developing a privacy policy because they'll be holding um, valuable and personal customer information. Um, so yes, the answer is yes, RD. Thank you. Alan, do you have a motion you'd like to bring to the floor? Yeah, I would like to move that the <clears throat> that the governing board accept the recommendation of the executive committee that the CV fiber privacy policy overview be adopted. Second. That was seconded by Jeremy Matt, am I correct? Yep. Excellent. Is there additional discussion on this matter? All right then, are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Well, thank you, everybody. This passes unanimously. Thank you. This thank is you. this is good work. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, I'm going to move on now to uh, to email security. I'm I'm going to let others talk about what we're doing here, but I I, I want to relate a story that was told to me that maybe some folks are very familiar with, and you can correct me where I get it wrong, but I think I've got the gist of it. One of the one of the very, very large uh, electronics companies in the world um, had had uh, had an internet security firm that was uh, uh, on contract, and they wanted to develop an internet security policy. And this company, because they very much deal in these kinds of things, thought that they already had some really excellent and extensive policies in place. And they thought they were basically impermeable, but they were gonna hire these folks to help. And they, these folks that they hired said, yeah, we can probably break into your email system in an hour. And they said, no, that's absolutely impossible. And they said, well, we're going to do it. This was part of the contract. They took a handful of USB drives, a handful of these guys, threw them on the floor of the parking lot. And within half an hour, those, in, those infected drives had allowed them to access the, the email system. So this is... It's the the human aspect of security is is extremely extremely important, and at our uh, Thursday the fifth at our executive committee meeting, we approved uh, for recommendation to the board um, that we that we follow up with with uh, with some email security training. Uh, potentially some software, uh, and we're going to move forward with that because we've been fished multiple times, and it's it's really about the person on the other side of the screen because everybody gets fished. It's it's the person on the how we respond to it is what's is what's uh, really important here. Uh, so you know, we don't we don't need to make a motion here. We don't we don't need to approve anything the executive committee did. It's a relatively small contract, but I want to let folks know that we're doing this, and I I'd like to have a discussion about it. So I'm going to go from Christopher to Jeremy to R D. Please go ahead, Christopher. Hey, good evening. Um, so I wanted to share a uh, a, a similar anecdote that Jerry just did, but one that that truly legitimately could affect CV fiber because we don't have a parking lot. Um, well, we do, but we don't have a parking lot with employees coming and going who would pick up and plug into a company computer and, and, and hack us. So the situation 
Um, this this happened to a company that I worked for, thankfully, before I, I worked for them. Uh, <clears throat> so phishing emails um, are becoming increasingly sophisticated and and extremely difficult to identify to you know even professionals um, you have to look very very closely and and you have to know some very specific things to look out for and um, people so, will you know the real scenario real is real quick though does you receive an email on, does everyone on the call know what a phishing email is before we keep talking about that because some people might feel lost about that that's good yeah, yeah. I, I can i'm happy to to share okay. that um so a phishing a phishing email is is essentially any email that is sent to an individual to in in order to extract data from them uh or information of, of some kind and the phishing emails that are most effective that i've seen are ones for us we use microsoft 365 Microsoft sends legitimate emails to all of you from time to time um, for various things. You've been added to a group, maybe your you know, password has expired. There's all, any number of reasons why Microsoft might email you. And these phishing schemes will email you and they look exactly like an email from Microsoft. Um, so much so that <clears throat> it convinces even the people to click on a link and, and you are brought to a website that looks exactly like a Microsoft website. Um, and it convinces you to enter your username and password in to verify some piece of information or whatever. Well, guess what? You just entered your real username and password into the, their database and now they have it and now they can get access um, to your email and then they move on from there. So I just wanted to share that story as, as something that is real. And, and, and also the data that they get they don't care about the data. They're not looking to steal the data and, and make off with it. What they're looking to do is hold us hostage because they know we need access to that data and, and basically ask for ransom. I was told that we are a target as a, a public entity known to have large amounts of grant funds. So we're going to start seeing, we've already seen some and we're likely to see more because we are, we have a target <laughs> due to our, our um, grant funding. Uh, Jeremy, I see your hand is down now. Was that the bit about the, the definition that you wanted to get out there? Yeah, although I did have another thing that just popped into my head um, is that people might see us as being less sophisticated because we're not a professional organization or a group of volunteers. So people might think that we're, we would be easier targets. Uh, understood. We've got to dissuade people from thinking that volunteers don't mean professionals, I must say. RRD, no, go ahead, sir. Just curious, are we the repository of information uh, that, uh, that uh, fishers would be looking for? And second, um, again, what about our third party contractors? Do we have uh, any way of ensuring that that they are that, that any data we share with them is not hackable? <laughs> Sorry, I, no, it, I realize that there, there is no such thing in life as perfection. Exactly. So, the, so this is what we're doing. The, yeah, Go the ahead, immediate Gina. tool we're looking at um, is no before, and that there's a couple of things that need to be done um, to to ensure our security. Um, but the the first step that we would like to approach is the no before, which is to arm our people with knowledge and information and test phishing attacks so that we understand how to prevent it on a human level, because that is the we are human human beings are the weakest link. There might be other places where we need an assessment of all of our security and we need to see where other holes are, but we need to arm our people first and foremost. And that's the first step that we're looking to. Right. So what we're doing here is the first step addressing our email security. Henry, I, I saw that your hand is up. Go ahead, please. Right. Having worked in secure situations before um, all you know Delco and MITRE they all have like a security training awareness class and and in order to access the network you have to successfully complete the training and and you know something like that you might be able to get from someone else you know they they have canned training programs 
for this kind of stuff. We don't have to necessarily invent it ourselves. And then in order to be on the network, you have to be able to complete that training. Yeah, yeah, so Henry, what... we're not inventing, we're, we're actually hiring a firm that does this um, and we're, we're hiring them to, uh, to train us and to bring us through the process. Um, so we're not, we're definitely not inventing, reinventing right. the wheel here. We're, <clears throat> we're bringing have, in professionals. Do they have an online training module is my question. They have many of them. It's called Know Before. Oh, okay. All right, good. So you're already on it. Thank, thank you, Henry. Uh, let's see. So I have a, a couple more hands that are up here. Let's see. Uh, John Hosford and then Jeremy Hansen. John, you're on mute. John, I see your hand up and I see, it looks like you're not on mute, but I don't hear anything from you. All right, let's move to Jeremy Hansen. We can come back to John. Jeremy, go ahead, please. So, um, no before is, uh, it is what Norwich University uses for exactly this sort of thing. And so I do get those test phishing emails. They are, um, easy for me to spot because I'm a recovering security professional and it's uh, it's really pretty straightforward. Um, it's in some ways a lot better than the MITRE, uh, the MITRE tools and the trainings that are out there, mainly because it lets administrators uh, know who is most at risk. So if we're looking at, I'm going to pick on, let's see, uh, the other Jeremy, Jeremy Matt. Let's say Jeremy Matt just clicks on literally everything that comes into his inbox. We will know that. We will be told that. And if we, that means we need to dial back his access or disable his account. Uh, wait, I don't know that we can actually do that or we should do that, but we shame would know him, that. Shame him publicly, maybe. Exactly. <laughs> right. I mean, th th things like that, but we, it, you have a dashboard and there's ongoing training, annual training, this phishing testing. And <clears throat> I have some personal feelings about the organization itself, but the training and the, um, and what they provide to us, I think is, uh, has been effective and has been quite good. Thank you, Jeremy. That's, that's good. That's, that's good to know. So we're, we're, we're moving down this path. We believe it's important. Um, so we're 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 doing it. Is is there any additional discussion on this matter? I see a lot of hands up, but not all down after having spoken. Should be working now, Jerry. Hey, John. Thank you. And then we'll go to John Morris after John Hosford. Um, I in in my professional work, I am on the uh, uh, emergency response team for breaches, and working for the state, we have a great many um, opportunities to work. Um, no, before we don't use at the state, I am familiar with them and they do do good training. We do have training at the state as well from a different company. But my real question was, have uh, have you looked into breach insurance? Um, because this training is part of getting breach insurance normally for companies. Um, it's it's getting harder and harder to get because it's getting more and more expensive, but it does exist. Uh, obviously, the state has it, but uh, most major companies have it as well. To, not only to uh, to pay out losses to our customers, but also to to pay for for breach investigation and everything else if we do get uh, get hit. Thank you, Thank you John. John. Yeah, That's I'm. I'm going Go to ahead, be looking Jeff. into. I'm going to be looking into other insurances um, now that we're getting more materials in, and I'm going to talk to our insurer. So this is one of the things I'll bring up. So thank you very much for that suggestion. Yeah, that that's a really good point. Thank you. So let's go to John Morris and then Linda. So um, I'm not sure of the point of this whole conversation. Uh, but it sounds like maybe we should expect to be starting to receive these test phishing messages. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll let folks know when we're starting for sure, and th there'll be an a, an orientation and initiation. Yeah, we'll we'll let folks know where we're starting, but we should always be aware, right? 
I, I don't. I don't. I was going to say, look out the, for them right now. Yeah, I don't. I don't think they start out with the phishing uh, emails. They start out with the training. Yeah. So you're going to wind up going through some training modules, and there's like a half a dozen of the so of those, and they and some of them are short. Some 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 of them are 20 minutes. Some of them are 10 minutes. But um, uh, the, I, I I did those at uh, Norwich, as Jeremy was just talking about. So you'll get the training first, and then you'll be tested every once in a while. Is that good, John? Answer your question? Yes, thank you. Excellent, thank you. Uh, Linda, go ahead, please. So I'm going to recommend that everyone is required to take this training. Is that that is that the plan? Well, yeah, so we'll, the plan we'll is for everybody. Track, Absolutely. We will we'll basically track everyone to make sure that they have watched the video, for example. Um, is that kind of the way it's going to proceed? That that's exactly it, Linda. And I'm I'm even thinking that you know we may ask you to enforce that. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm always the bad cop. <laughs> Actually, I, 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 have, that, I have experience with security companies also, so that's why I'm asking these questions. Thank yep, you. Very, very good. Thank you. That's that's a very logical question. Uh, let's see. I see Jeremy and Henry. I don't know if these are residual or if they're fresh. Go ahead, Jeremy. So someone had asked if we have information that people would want. Um, the answer is maybe. I mean, we, we have some information that we consider to be proprietary, but more than that, people trying to attack us with this would be trying to use, you know, try to get my login information so they could send a email to Jerry to get his information. And then he could, you know, then use that to tell you know, our treasurer to transfer money somewhere or something along those lines, right? Trying to, you know, use a little bit of access from one place. I'm more trusted than some random email and then leapfrog and get more access to something that they really do want yep. or to hold us hostage as someone else had mentioned. So anyway. That, that, that's And that's exactly the kind of experience we've had in the past with these, with these fishing uh, expeditions. So... I don't see any more hands up. Uh, this was a great discussion. Thank you. And I, I, I appreciate folks being interested in making sure this works uh, because we, 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 we uh, you know, as we're growing up here, we've got to do all these adult things, right? So this is one of them. Uh, so next, I, I, I'd like to get a conversation going a, a, a little bit about CV Fiber meetings schedule. I don't know that this needs to be a long conversation, but I, I do want folks to know that we're, we're, we're re revisiting the schedule to see if our flow of work makes sense or not as it's laid out. And we'll be asking each of the uh, committees to think about where they need to be in, in our monthly schedule. But Chuck, go ahead. I see you have your hand up, sir. Yeah, so a little, little bit of a, an update on this. Uh, there is a working group that has uh, assembled um, to try to make some headway on this. Uh, it is Alan Gilbert, Janiel, and myself. Um, and uh, before I, I talk a little bit about what we are doing, uh, I do want to just uh, give a little bit of additional context here. So um, the way our meetings have been sequenced has been a big part of CV Fiber for the last couple of years. And the important part of it is that we start with the governing board. We then go to executive who takes some governing board decrees and further distributes them or acts on them. Uh, we then go to planning and development, who are the boots on the ground, you know, getting the network built work. Uh, we then go to communications, which uh, we are then able to take all of the output of the governing board and the executive committee and the, and the pl and planning and development committee um, and be able to update our, our communities based on the progress of, of those working, uh, of, of that work. Um, and then we go to uh, finance and policy and then one more executive committee to feed back into the, the governing board. Um, and so this sequencing, this order, has been a big part of why we've been able to be effective over the course of, of the last couple of years. But it comes with one 
very, very annoying drawback, which is the two committees, that is uh, communications and policy, hence Alan and my working on it, uh, fall on Thursdays. And the logic there, unlike the Tuesday meetings, which is just the second Tuesday of the month for a board, the third Tuesday of the month for planning development, the fourth Tuesday of the month for, for finance, Thursday follows this arcane logic of being the executive committee being the second Thursday, of the, sorry, the Thursday following the second Tuesday <laughs> of the month, the communications committee being the Thursday following the third Tuesday of the month, and the policy committee being the Thursday following the fourth Tuesday of the month. It's very, very confusing to manage. Uh, it's probably a disservice to the public at large who you know need to be empowered to know when to attend these meetings when they want to for open meeting law purposes. Um, and and it's a scheduling nightmare when it comes to calendars because calendaring software doesn't know how to do that. So what we have to do is we have to schedule it for the third meeting, third Thursday, and then we have to manually override it any month where that doesn't actually pan out to be the case. Um, so it's it's not ideal for for a few different reasons, uh, but there are a couple of other smaller reasons, such as uh, it's very difficult, in fact, to come out of a board meeting on a Tuesday night and go immediately into executive committee on a Thursday night, not being able to adjust the warrant agenda because there's not enough lead time anymore. So long story short, the three of us are getting together we're, we're going to gather some additional information from folks, and we're going to make a couple of possible proposals. Now, it is also our belief that the committees at the end of the day should have some say in when they meet. So I, I will say we're going to come back with a couple of proposals, but it's still going to be up to everybody to adopt them. You know, I, I, we don't believe they should be necessarily dictated, uh, uh, but we hope we can find something that solves a few of the problems inherent to our current schedule uh, while giving us a little bit of better predictability and visibility into when meetings will be. On that end, we're also, I think, going to attempt to ask committees to maybe meet a little bit earlier for those that are meeting late in dinner time. I don't think that's always going to work, uh, particularly if communications remain on Thursdays. That unfortunately presents a little bit of a challenge for me. Um, but we will need to gather some feedback from folks because we know there are work conflicts. We know um, that there are sometimes obligations with with family uh, and and kids and sports and things, all all sorts of things like that. Uh, so we will make sure that we um, gather appropriate feedback on these proposals uh, before we really start kind of pushing toward their adoption. Bravo. Uh, and, and I'll just add, I don't know if anybody has ever worked in an organization that followed the 445 calendar, but let's not do that. You should put that on KitKat or TikTok or whatever. <laughs> well, I don't know what a 445 calendar is, and it's probably a good thing. Uh, so this, the, the intent here was purely informational. I, I don't, I, I don't know that there's uh that there's any action that we need to take here, Chuck, at this time. Um, but we really do appreciate you guys taking a look at this because I, I, I do believe that that workflow management has been a critical part of our success, such as it is, because that really has worked. Um, I, and you know, with the few times that we've had to have special meetings, um, the way the workflow has been set up, we've really avoided a lot more special meetings. So that, that's that's been a good thing. Is there uh, additional discussion here on this? You know, it's already February. It's already, it's already February. So, oh, Linda, go ahead, please. I just have a question. Why are there no meetings the first week of every month? The last me the last week of the month and the first week week of the month were left available. First of all, we only have five committees, right? And then the last week and the first week of the month were left available for special meetings if they were required. I guess I was thinking just if we just slid into the first of the month and left the last week of the month for specials, 
that might help the whole situation. Just a suggestion. I'm not getting into the committee. I got enough work to do right now. I, I aren't there a lot of Working select group. boards that meet like the first and third week of the month? I, I seem to remember select boards playing part of this or something, but I'm not sure. Mondays. Select boards are generally Mondays. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll continue working on this. Thank you all. And we, of course, have a, an executive committee meeting in two days. So those those that can make it, we will uh, we will see you then. I always send the invitation to everybody on the governing board because everybody is, of course, welcome. So just to keep you in the loop as to where we are and what we're doing. Uh, other than that, I believe it may be time to adjourn. Any opposed to adjourning? See you all later and thanks for all the hard work everyone's putting in. Thank you so much for all you do. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.